Good morning. Um, we're here again at National Museum Scotland, where today I'm going to introduce you to one of our new exhibitions, which opens today, Age of Oil, um, and it runs until the 5th of November. It's the museum's contribution to the Edinburgh Art Festival, and I'm here with the artist who created the work, Sue Jane Taylor, um, who's going to tell us a bit more about the process of creating her work and about the exhibition. Um, so first of all, Sue Jane, um, why Age of Oil? Yes, um, well, it's always been part of my, well, contemporary Highland culture. I grew up with it all around. I was also an art student in Aberdeen, the oil capital of Europe. Um, and also as a, a postgraduate student, I was commissioned to go out on a cargo vessel out to the North Sea to see these offshore installations, which kind of blew my mind. Uh, and it was really on and off for the past 30 years I've been working on the subject. Um, but today, um, the exhibition at the museum here is really the work, my artworks from the past decade. And they have you know, three main themes running through the exhibition. The Aberdeen Harbour, uh, key to the oil and gas industry, everything brought out by sea. And then we've got the offshore that's Murchison and Brent fields, two iconic um, fields in the oil North Sea, and then the renewables, which I am still involved in, working on the artworks there. Um, and I think just even getting a glimpse of this work, you can see the detail that Sue Jane puts into the work from the sketches that she does to um, the finished products which are composites of all the sketches that she has done over uh, many months, many years sometimes. Um, the lovely thing for us and the reason um, we're so keen to have this in the museum is that through Sue Jane's contacts in the industry we've been able to collect some wonderful objects to complement her work. Um, the oil and gas industry clearly such an important one to Scotland, it's important that we collect in the museum um, to represent that industry. Given the scale of it, we're always looking to collect something that we can accommodate in the collections. So through Sue Jane's contacts, we've got examples um, of this sort of material. So the very last oil samples from the Murchison platform on the day um, it was shut down, the 28th of February, 2014, last oil, you can see there with a sample of the oil, and this viscosity comparator used in the labs on Murchison. Now this was something that Sue Jane managed to save um, as the platform was being shut down um, and organized for the company to donate to the museum collections. Sue Jane, can you maybe tell us a bit about your diaries and the films that accompany yes. your work? Yeah, not only are the, the, the visual work, the artworks um, part of my, my, my uh, message. Um, recently, um, I've been uh, working on uh, some short films, and the films are all handheld, almost home movies. And the important part of this is to get the workforce, the, the people uh, working on the platforms uh, involved, filming, and, and so it's a sort of joint team venture with the, these films. Um, and my diaries, I've always written diaries um, throughout uh, working on site, again as a, a, a reminder, a note for my own visual work, but also importantly recording the people who work in this industry. Offshore there's about 33,000 on average people who work offshore in the North Sea. Um, so it's all part of my work, all part of, of the sort of the story that I'm trying, the message, almost like a social history as well. Um, but the three works um, from Murchison, again a kind of triptych, um, triptych uh, sort of symbolic uh, uh, message about the, the platform itself from from the um, lowest uh, deck of the, the platform where the well risers come up from the sea uh, taking the oil and gas from from the wells well far below the control room which is the heart of the platform uh, in every platform and then the iconic image of the flare tip um, and the 360 um, degree 
viewpoint from Murchison of all the oil, other oil fields up in the northern North Sea. It's like a city really up there. Um, so it's all the different oil platforms. You can even see the Norwegian sector as well. So it's a, a vista. Out, yeah. And some of those tiny dots in that image you've just seen um, are the Brent platforms, which was the next place which Sue Jane visited, Brent Delta and then Brent Bravo. Um, so the exhibition also documents her work there. Um, with examples, again, of some of the objects we were able to collect, such as this wonderful and intriguing object called a pipeline pig. Now, the pig's purpose is to clean the inside of an oil pipeline from debris um, as it moves through the inside of the pipeline, pushed along by the flow of the oil, not interrupting the flow of oil, um, just to clean off the inside of the pipe. Um, it's called a pig because it squeals as it travels along, pushed along by the flow of oil. A vital part to any offshore working is the safety equipment, survival suits, um, and again it's something that Sue Jane documents a lot in her work. So we have examples of the safety equipment. But next to that we also have examples of uh, much more quirky objects um, which Sue Jane has managed to get us for the exhibition. Tell us something about this one. Yes, I'm always looking for sort of human personal touches uh, because, you know, working in the sort of oil industry offshore, certainly the hard environment. And uh, in, on Brent Delta, um, at tea time, uh, I noticed the control operator coming in, holding this object called the tea flower, uh, containing six cups of tea. Um, an a, a amazing invention um, which has been on the platform, had been on the platform, they say, for maybe over 20 years. Um, then they have to go up three flights of stairs internally to get their, their tea or coffee, nibnabs as they call it, tea break. And um, they're not allowed to carry anything with their hands. So this was a, a, a unique invention and it's wonderful that Shell has um, loaned the object and even better that the men didn't keep this as a souvenir uh, but gave it um, for a part of this exhibition. And then moving on to the final part of the exhibition which concentrates more on the renewable energy sector. Um, as the oil and gas goes into its next phase of decommissioning some of these vast platforms, alongside that, uh, vast offshore wind turbines are in the process of development. The first one in the Moray Firth, as we speak, is being developed. Sue Jane spent some time looking at the prototypes of um, those wind farms being uh, constructed a few years ago. But what this section also makes very clear again is her interest in the workers on both the oil and gas platforms and now in the renewable sector, so vital to keeping those industries going. So can you tell us a bit yep. about those? Yes. Um, in the past, certainly, the oil and gas industry really didn't focus on the people um, who worked in this industry. Um, and over the years, I've drawn portraits of different people uh, from all different um, uh, disciplines in, in the work. And, and here, for example, with the renewables, um, I was intrigued by the PhD student at the time who was um, monitoring bird flight movements around the site offshore on the Murray Firth, uh, actually for the, the oil company to uh, monitor the birds there. And I drew her uh, at um, her work um, at Cromarty Field Station. Um, and uh, also I'm fascinated by the kind of work gear that these people wear as well. Um, so um, that's the colors and also the sort of uh, safety stuff that they have to wear, but also it becomes uh, quite a sort of visual uh, element for me, exciting to draw. And also, um, importantly, what's going on now, especially in Orkney, as I was saying, the prototypes in, in, in the Murray Firth, the world first, but also there's lots going on um, off the coast of Orkney. Uh, and I, I've got the chance to draw 
two prototypes out uh, by Hoy, Hoy Sound, called Bilia Cru Site um, Palamas, uh, like also a sea snake to me, um, in the water, and also the Wellow Penguin, which was like a pop art installation bobbing about uh, on the waters there. Thank you, Sue Jane. So that's a very quick introduction to Age of Oil, which, as I say, runs until the 5th of November. Um, there is also a publication. As we said, Sue Jane's diaries uh, are vital to understanding the whole um, of her experience offshore. And those are published in the Age of Oil catalogue, um, which you'll be able to get on the online um, bookshop at the museum. So do come along and do join us in uh, the museum's contribution to the Edinburgh Art Festival. Thank you.